All right, welcome. We're going to get a little experimental today. Uh, we'll have a foam roller to play with. So if you have one at home, you'll grab it for class. We're also going to play with balance, but like wind style. So we'll be low to the ground. Uh, so have a foam roller and then anything else you might think you want, like maybe a, a blanket or a pillow just for extra cushion. We'll go ahead and take a moment here and just settle in. So whatever that looks like for you, you can lie down, you can sit up, you can take a moment to lift the shoulders if you're seated, lower them down your back. And we'll take two more shoulder shrugs, lifting and lowering. And one more lift and lower. You can either close your eyes all the way or halfway. Start to find your breath, let it envelop you, let your inhale expand throughout your rib cage. And let your exhale slowly let go of what you no longer need. We'll take three more slow breaths like that. Inhale fully. And exhale completely. Last one, inhale. And exhale. We're gonna wake up our shoulder joint first off, first of all today. So you'll stay seated. Take your fingertips to your shoulders. We'll start with some circular movement. So if it's available, maybe your elbows could touch or maybe they almost touch. And then you'll take your elbows to point up to the ceiling, circle them behind you and down. We'll do this three more rotation. Checking in with the range of motion in the shoulder joints. How does it feel? Might hear clicks or pops, might feel a little bit of congestion in a certain part of the shoulder joint, that's normal. The next time you draw your elbows together, let's reverse and you're gonna reach them down, back, up, and forward and down. Letting your breath just become a little bit deeper when we start to feel like the breath falls away. Can we find it again? And then we'll rest our hands on our thighs and we'll do something similar with the neck. So first of all, you wanna lift your heart up. That might mean drawing your ears back in space a little bit. So your spine is really tall. Keep your spine tall and then drop your chin down to your throat. Roll your chin over to your shoulder. You can look back behind that shoulder and then drop your chin down and then over to the opposite shoulder. So you'll stick with this movement. It's just like a little, almost like a half circle, drawing your chin down, rolling it over to one side, drawing your chin down, rolling it over to the other side. We'll do that two more times. Shoulders are relaxing away from your ears. And then the, when you're even, you'll drop your chin down and then just take a moment to breathe into the back of your neck, making the back of your neck long. And then let your inhale float your head up. Nice. Let's, get, let's do some more stuff with the neck. And we're gonna use the foam roller. Now there's a muscle, I'm gonna turn around so you can see this right at the back of your skull. So not on the neck, but the skull. So here's the middle of your skull, just to the right of that. There was a thick ropey muscle that we're going to find. We'll do it on both sides, but just keep that in mind so you have that visual. So what you'll do is you'll lie down and you'll take this foam roller right at the base of your skull. You can hold your foam roller steady in your hands and start to kind of find the center of your skull. And then you'll turn your head a bit to the right. So you're about halfway to your ear and you'll feel that thick ropey muscle. You'll, you'll feel pressure there. 
You want to stay on that muscle. So you might simply stay here and breathe and just notice that there's a bit of tenderness uh, at this part of the skull, or you might nod your chin up and down, or you might move your nose in a circular motion, just kind of massaging that, that right side of the skull. You can kind of explore a little bit uh, intuitively here. And then we'll bring the head back to center and we'll explore the other side. So moving your gaze, turning your head over to the left, you might move your hair out of the way if it feels like it's uh, keeping you from feeling that pressure of that muscle releasing. And then when you find that thick ropey muscle to the left side of your skull, you can stay here. You can kind of move your head around, you could nod your chin up and down or make circles with your nose or just stay here, just really noticing what is happening in this moment. We'll take three more breaths, just being curious about where is the sensation, kind of moving into wherever you're noticing sensation. And then we'll bring our head back to center. Now we're gonna do something else specifically for the neck. It's gonna help reinvigorate the natural curve in your cervical spine. So they have special pillows for this actually, but we have a foam roller. So it's like a two for one. So what you'll do is you'll take one hand behind your head. You'll lift your hand, head away from the foam roller and then roll the foam roller behind your neck and then lower your head down so the back of your neck is in contact with that foam roller. And then you can look up. You can even take your hands under your chin and just kind of pick up your chin a little bit to the ceiling. You're feeling that curve at the back of the neck. It often gets um, compressed or flattened. Take two more breaths here. And then we'll just very carefully come out of this, hold the foam roller with one hand. The other hand picks up the skull off the foam roller. Roll the foam roller out from behind you live on your back with your head flat on the mat. Notice how the back of your neck feels. And then we'll roll over to the side and then let's roll out. Oh, sorry, Chloe, I almost skipped my pad. Let's roll out a um, sort of classic thing to roll out on the foam roller, the side ribs. So we're kind of working our way down today, down our body. So you'll take that foam roller or you can take a towel and roll it up um, as an alternative to the foam roller. Rest right on the rib cage, the side ribs on that foam roller. You support your head with your hand or you could rest your head all the way down on your arm depending on what your needs are. You can also come up onto your forearm um, and that can, your head is supported that way because you're not too uh, low in the side vent. And then we're just going to rock. So you're keeping your foam roller still, but you're rocking forward and back. Finding whatever tight areas you can, gradually working it out by just breathing into those areas, either holding still or steady, or you can rock. And maybe ever so often picking up the foam roller, moving it in a little different part of your rib cage as you need. I've, I've lately been experimenting with going lower down my ribs, um, kind of away from the armpit, and there's a lot of tenderness there. Uh, that I've been surprised about. So you can experiment. You can also lean back and notice when you lean back, notice what sensations arise. So we'll take about four more breaths here. Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I haven't done this in a week, so I'm really noticing it. <laughs> ah, all right, and then we'll take our, a moment to sit before we turn to the other side and just notice how you feel. So maybe there's a lightness. You can do that little uh, thing we did at the beginning where we rotated our shoulder joints. It might feel like there's a clearing in one shoulder now that's not quite in the other yet. And then we'll do the other side. So we'll move that foam roller across. And you're on your side ribs and forearm or elbow or resting your head on your arm, whatever feels like a good idea. We'll start that rocking. And listening to this side, what its needs are separately from the first side. So this side might be more tender or it might be less depending on what your body is feeling like. And so we wanna accommodate that, be gentle if it's feeling really, really sensitive. And maybe ever so often exploring a new area on the side of the rib cage that might need some attention as well. Oof. And maybe holding a spot here or there, breathing into it. Let's take two more breaths. And then we'll go ahead and make our way up and uh, like before you can explore what shifted in that really short period of time, maybe circling the arms and the shoulder joint one more time. All right, let's continue our journey of opening the sides. When you open your sides, it makes back bending, it makes spinal twists, it makes everything easy. So I'm gonna move this foam roller out of the way for later. We're going to do a side lying sphinx pose. We do this one a lot actually, uh, so kind of my go-to lately. So you can set your elbow, um, lined up with the back edge of your mat. And then you can move your hips also towards the back edge of the mat. Now, if you get here and it feels really hard to balance, you having your legs also at the back edge of the mat, you can angle them forward slightly for balance. But what we wanna feel is a stretch in the bottom portion of our waist. And so you have to do that by shrugging the shoulder up around your up. Uh, so this is the first option. The second option is going to be a stronger stretch. You're going to come up onto your hands. Your top hand is just there for a little bit of support. Your bottom hand is not quite under your shoulder. It's going to be a little bit up your mat. So your shoulder can shrug up and you can experience that side stretch. So whichever version you want to choose, get into that next. And we'll, we'll linger here for a little bit. Yeah, so we'll hang out here, breathing into that bottom rib cage, into the belly, just for a little bit of time. Whew. And curious about what is resistance showing up in the body and sitting with that resistance, not running away from it, but just being with it. We'll take five more breaths here. Take a deep breath in. 
And as you exhale, we can come up to seated from where we're at. So we'll feel what it's like to sit one more time. And just like before, you can test the waters, maybe stretch the arms or maybe circle for a moment in your shoulder joints. And then we'll move to the other side. So finding our alignment, you can start on your elbow or end up on your palm, depending on what you need on this side. It might need something a little different here, depending on how much tighter or looser. You want to hike the shoulder up by the ear. If you're on your forearm, you want your elbow roughly right under your shoulder or maybe even a little inch higher than your shoulder so you get more of that side stretch. Otherwise, you can come up onto your hands. I like to point my fingers up the mat, up to the uh, front edge of the mat. I recommend that for your wrist. And then find that hiked shoulder again. Ah. You feel as if your bones are propping you up and everything that's not your bones, your muscle, your tissue, all of that can relax away from your bones here. Your belly can open up, your internal organs can even expand in this pose. Just taking a few more breaths here. Last three breaths. All right, and then we'll sit up one more time, noticing how we feel in our sides, in our arms, our shoulders, it's all so interwoven. Let me do one thing real quick here. All right, so from here, um, let's explore just some little experimental balance. Um, why not? So we're gonna lie all the way down on our side. You're gonna have your legs. Now it's been really important. You have your whole body in one long line. So if you're on a yoga mat, line up your whole body against the back edge of the mat. And then, just here, you can have your top hand in front of you. Just this alone might feel like a little bit of balance or a lot of balance just to be here. If you want a uh, more challenge, you can take your hand behind your head, your bottom hand. And then see if you can hover your legs up and then maybe even lift your arm up. And then just see what happens. So we're balancing on our sides. It's normal to feel a little wobbly here. You don't feel wobbly, it could be the legs are really far forward and that's creating a kickstand-like effect. You want everything in one plane. Good, now if you want to play even more, you could do little flutter kicks with your legs. This isn't really yin, this is more yang, but we need a little bit of yang in our yin practice from time to time. It doesn't hurt anything, so just kind of balancing it in a different way today. Take one more breath here. And then you're actually gonna roll onto your belly and you'll come up to Sphinx Pose. You'll have your forearms on the mat. You'll have your elbows just either under your shoulder line or just about an inch in front of your shoulder line. And then you can tuck all 10 toes under. Start to crawl your thigh bones back like you're lengthening your legs further down your mat. Untuck your toes. Press into your arms, active arms, spine is long, neck is long, shoulders are down away from your ears. And then you can always open the legs wider for more of a low back release. I'm going to hang out here for a little bit. So the arms are long, they're engaged. But everything else gets to soften your belly, your glutes, your hips, your feet. 
the muscles in your face. Take one more breath here. And as you exhale, widen your elbows, lower all the way down onto your belly. Let your low back relax. You can bend your knees and windshield wiper your feet right and left as you like. And let's go ahead and do that balance on the other side before we go back to foam rolling. So you can come up. You can just face the other end of your mat and line up your whole side body, your hip, your legs, your arm, everything in one long one. Already, you might start to feel a little bit wobbly. So if you were to look down, you wouldn't necessarily see your feet. They would be that much in line with your whole body, right? You can either keep your top hand on the floor like a kickstand, or you could have both arms up. And see what happens if you take your hand behind your head, that bottom hand behind your head. And then see what happens if you hover your legs up. And then notice your breath. Has it gone away or can you find a deeper breath? And then if you want to play with more challenge, maybe your top arm lifts up. You want to play with even more challenge. It, think of everything else is still. It's just the legs doing this little movement, this little dance. Ah! <laughs> Little flutter, 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 flutter. Yes. You have to find your core and pull it in towards your spine for this one. Let's take two more breaths. And last one. And then you'll roll onto your belly. And we're actually going to come up to get our foam roller next. So you can press yourself up how you like. Let's lay on our foam roller. We're gonna lay on it like the whole head and spine on it. So you'll take it in the middle of your mat. And then sitting all the way up the front of the foam roller, tailbones on, you'll lie back and make sure you feel stable. So make sure your feet are at least hip width on the mat or even wider than hip width. Then make sure your head is on it as well. I really want to protect our neck here. So the head must be on the foam roller. And then we'll do that thing we did in the very beginning, resting the fingertips on the shoulders, draw the elbows together, elbows are bent, and then start some big circular motion. Here. Just noticing the pops and the snaps and all the little nuance. And then you can reverse the other way. You can either continue, this feels really good with bent elbows, continue to circle. We'll go both directions again, but maybe you want to extend your arms long and circle instead. So it doesn't have to be all the way straight, but maybe maybe a little bend in the elbow or maybe straight arms, you can experiment. Think elegant posture while you're here. Broad collarbones. And then if you've been circling one way, circle the opposite way now. Oop, I have a plant right behind me. <laughs> Do two more. Last one here. When you feel about even, we can move on to getting into the traps. So those are the, the most superficial upper part of our back that gets really tight really quickly, really easily. You'll interlace your fingers, stretch your arms all the way back like you're intentionally. We want to shrug our shoulders up by our ears for this next one. Keep that shrug and then lower the hands down to the floor. Keep that 
then do a real subtle rock right and left across your foam roller. Let that foam roller massage those traps, that uppermost part of your back that's tight. And then when you feel like you've rocked an even number, we'll lower the hands down by the side and we're gonna play with balance now. So for balance, we do wanna tilt our pelvis towards our face. So in other words, it's like you're imprinting your low spine flat into the foam roller. So see if you can find that. Low spines flat into the foam roller, keep that. Hands are steady on the floor. Walk your feet together. And then see if you can lift your right leg up to tabletop and just, just kind of find the bearings all over again. All right, keep your right leg where it is and then extend your right leg out like you could point your big toe to touch where the ceiling and the wall meets and then bend your right knee back in. So repeating that, extend your right leg long out across the room at 45 degrees. Bend the knee back in. You might feel a lot of work to be here. Everything touching the mat has to stabilize. Okay, let's add on from here. So can you bend your right knee, hold it there? Is it possible to hover your left arm off or maybe most of your fingertips, your left fingertips off? Just the left, not, we wanna keep our right arm steady on the ground. If you can hover your fingertips off, maybe you can hover your whole arm up to the ceiling. If you can do that, maybe your arm can go across your body and you can tap your bent knee. Okay, and so you tap your bent knee. So then see if you can extend both the arm and leg away from each other. And then as you bend the knee, bring your hand back to tap that knee. Yeah, slow and steady here. Our body is constantly recalibrating to help hold us steady here. If you go slow and you breathe deeply, it's gonna be more work, but, but better, wiser, integral work, right? Let's do two more here. And last one. And then lower all the way down and just take a moment to relax. So that's a lot of work. Maybe, maybe you take your feet wide on the mat and you sort of windshield wiper your knees and you rock across your foam roller before you fall. All right, moving on. So be curious about if one side feels more connected than the other. So we just did one side. Let's see how the other one goes. Crawl your feet towards one another in the center of your mat. Imprint your low spine flat into the foam roll, like your pelvis is tilted towards your face. That's what you want to keep. Plant your hands, left leg lifts up to tabletop. Just starting here with this left leg only. Okay, so finding your balance first, then extending the leg long away from you, pulling it back in, and just finding that slow, steady pace. We're not in a hurry. This is kind of this deliberate movement. Let's do two more here. One more to straighten. One more to bend and hold. Now see if you can find your bearings here. Starting with the right elbow. Can you lift your right elbow off the floor? Can you lift most of your right fingers off? And then if that's going well, maybe your right arm can reaches up to the ceiling. Maybe the right arm goes across and it touches your opposite knee. And then the arm and leg reach away from each other as you inhale. Exhale, draw it in. And reach. And pull it in. Notice the wobbles, just find that breath. Reach and pull it in. Let's do that three more times. Slow and steady wins the race here. Ooh, last one. And bend, and then you can lower all the way down. 
However you want to reset, you can do a few arm circles, maybe three each direction before you move off the roller. And reverse. And then we'll go ahead and to roll off the foam roller. You want to roll all the way off to one side, just let it slide away from you and then lie flat on your back and just pause, noticing that little imprint of a foam roller still behind your back. Kind of a fun feeling. All right, you'll hug one knee in, kick that leg into your hand, nod the chin to the chest to come up. Let's also roll out the quads because if there's one other spot that's really important to roll out of the foam over it is the quads. So we're going to come to hands and knees and you'll take that foam roller right out in front of you. Now we want to roll before we lay on it. We want to roll from the bottom of the quads all the way up to the top, maybe even rolling over the pubic bone into the hip flexors and back down. I'll leave that range up to you, what you're comfortable with. We'll take our foam roller, lay our thighs on it, and then using your elbows like a little ice pick or ice climbing forward, and then you're going to roll that foam roller down just before your knees, and then you'll push with your arms, and you'll roll to the top of the quads or maybe even to the hip flexors. You can tuck your toes under to help push you off. If you need that, we do want to keep our belly engaged and our shoulders on our back. So neck is long throughout. I'm kind of migrating. Hold on. There we go. Now notice, notice how your feet are positioned. See if you can point your toes out and your heels in for this one. And notice how there's a portion of your quad that's being pressed more than other, the inner portion, the inner quad. Toes out, heels in. Notice how that feels. And then after you've explored a few with your toes out, heels in, you'll release your legs down and then you'll set up for the opposite pigeon toe feet heels out toes in so i have to kind of scoop my legs together on the foam roller to get my heels to roll out and toes in and then you can push off and just kind of notice how there's a different take in this quad release So perhaps more the, the front or the outer, even kind of the, more the outside of the quad. And then you can keep rolling, but then you're gonna do a neutral foot. So your toes point straight back, your heels point straight back, your feet are parallel to one another. You're not turning them out or in. And last breath here. And we'll go ahead and lower the legs down and you can press off your foam roller. And we'll just take a moment to set it to the side. And then let's do a spinal twist. So any props you might like, maybe something under your head, like a blanket, you'll lie down and you'll gather your knees into your chest, give them a nice hug. And just take a moment here to feel your tailbone curve up to the ceiling, your spine is rounded. And then let both of your knees drop over to the right side of your mat. Now, if you have your foam roller and you wanna use it, you could bring it in between your legs and that can help soften any tension that might be in your low back. Of course, you don't have to use a prop at all. And then the arms open wide. Maybe you crawl your shoulders a little bit over to the right side of your mat to 
Snuggle your left shoulder behind your back more. Gaze to the left. We'll take a few moments here just to soften and breathe and get yin again. We've done a lot of, I've done kind of a balance of yin and yang today. Kind of start to soften even more. Take our final breath, inhale fully. And as you exhale, you can remove your prop and return to your back and just pause. Check out how you feel before we move on to the second side. Notice any shifts. And then we'll set up for the second side. Draw the knees into the body. Let the legs fall over to the left. Move my body over a little bit. And then arms can open wide. You can stretch your right arm out to the right, gaze to the right. If you want to take that foam roller in between your legs, you can. This adds a little more ease in your low back here. Take our final breath here, inhale. And as you exhale, you can return to your back. And we'll take a moment to do some stuff with our hips elevated over the foam roller. It, you can use anything you want to elevate your hips like a pillow, but the foam roller just has a really nice solid feel to it. And, it's, um, and it gets your hips really high, which is really nice. So what you'll do is you'll bridge your hips and slide that foam roller horizontal under right at the lowest part of your spine. So actually below your low back. So where the sacrum, the back of the hips, the tailbone, that's the area we want. And it'll hold your foam roller steady, gather your knees in. You can start to move and rock across your foam roller, massaging that sacral area. There's all kinds of stuff to feel tension. So you can explore there, but ultimately we're going to also open up the front of our hips. Um, we'll do this slowly. So setting your left foot down on the floor, bring your right leg up towards uh, the knee joint is bent at around 90 degrees. 
keep that bent knee, but the thigh bone will stir around in the socket for about 10 circles. It does not have to be very big circles, just something that feels like you're clearing out that hip joint. And then you can go ahead and stir the opposite direction. We'll do about 10 again here. Checking in with what you're feeling. The back of the hips are kind of rocking across the foam roller, creating a massage effect as well. And then we'll briefly take number four stretch. So you'll cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh. And then you'll pick up your left knee and let your legs sort of collapse into your body. Pull that foam roller steady so it's supporting your low back. You don't want it sliding away here. All right, and then we'll explore the other side. So you can set your left foot down, set your right foot down, make any readjustments you need to. And then we'll pick up the left leg and we'll start to stir the leg around in a big sweeping circle. Big is relative. Whatever size circle feels like nourishment to your left hip joint. That's what we want. And then reversing that same circle. And then we'll take that left ankle and cross it over the right thigh. And then you'll pick up both legs, let them fall into your body. It's like gravity, pull those legs towards you. There's no effort. And then there's one last thing while we're here on the foam roller. So you can unwind your legs. We'll um, take our legs up to the ceiling very loosely. So not a whole lot of effort. And I know my feet are out of frame, but you can kind of circle, circle your feet around your ankles or point and flex, anything to get some release in those joints. And then just let yourself soften here. Let your body surrender. Feet are more or less hip distance apart. There is an effortlessness, a weightlessness that we're looking to find in our legs here. So you might change up the angles slightly or you might bend the knees a little bit more and we'll just take this time to rest. We'll go very slowly, bend the knees, set the feet on the floor and pause before we move on. Just letting ourselves have a moment here. And then you'll pick up your hips just high enough so then you can roll the foam roller down towards your knees. And you'll lower your pelvis back to the mat and you want that foam roller to end up right at the back of the knees so the, the legs have a slight bend because of that. We'll take just a few moments here to rest in Shavasana. So make yourself comfortable, just that level of comfort that is 
Uh, you can truly take rest for just these few minutes. Shavasana. Start to draw your awareness back, back into this moment and taking whatever pace you need to make your way back up to a seat. We'll end seated today and just find that, that little moment of pause before we move on from our practice and back into our day. It's just that moment of gratitude for showing up for yourself, making time for yourself, and doing that work, that internal work, which, you know, it's always, it's never wasted. We'll bring our hands together at our heart and bow the thinking mind to the caring heart. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace.